Hey, it's Harry from PB Tech, and today we have a special guest. We have Lara from Using Technology Better. Hello. Hi. Hi, Harry. Sweet. And you've brought in something awesome to show us today. I have. Can you please tell us what you're holding? Yeah. So this is a micro bit. While it looks pretty flash and kind of intimidating, it is so much fun and it's one of my favorite tools to use with teachers to get them engaged in the digital technologies curriculum and, and starting with coding. It's really reasonably priced and it does so many things. It's got some circuits and a computer chip on the back of it. It's got an accelerometer so it'll know if it's being shaken. It's also got a compass. You can connect to other tools and other things too with these pins, which means that you can scale it up and scale it down. So this product is associated with BBC, isn't that right? That's right, and in the UK, this was given out to a whole lot of students to use to learn coding and to learn computational thinking as well. But over here in New Zealand, where are these being mostly used? Are they in primary school or secondary school? Oh, they'll be used across the board. As a tool in training sessions with teachers, I often use this to talk about computational thinking and, and as an intro to coding, and teachers get excited. And I had a whole room of teachers a couple of weeks ago wanting to order one for themselves straight away, and they said, we'll get one each, and then we'll get some for the classroom. You sort of go, what about the students? But the cool thing about it is actually to program it, you don't need a classroom full of them because the software has a simulator of one on the screen. So you can practice your code, you can write your code, and you can test it out before you even get a physical micro bit to use with it. Really cool. That's downloadable from MakeBlock. So it's called MakeCode. You can download it or you can work online and you can share the programs you've written or set one up to start and kids can go in and try and find the errors or fix it up as well. So these have been made into pedometers. So right. you can program it so it'll track every step that is taken, measuring moisture in a plant or as a thermometer detecting the temperature in the room and it'll read it across the front. And that's pretty cool getting kids out and about actually doing something with yep. some of the tech. Definitely. And of just real life applications and understanding of how those things work. One of the first things I do with teachers is just get them to program it to read their name or hello and they love it. That's achievable for all ages to learn how to do. Yeah and the tutorials online for this are fantastic. Loads of projects and courses to work through really teaching that computational thinking and computer science. It's great. So those examples of what you can do with this tool are online but it also leaves you room to create your own inventions. Absolutely so it's about inventing and innovation or even just making a thing with the tutorial and then improving on it. Well, how could this be better? One of the ones I use in training is to make paper, scissors, rock. So when it's shaken, it will randomly select to show paper, scissors or rock. Um, and that's the basic code on the online tutorial. People then start to go, oh, well, well, I need it to do a pause between the pictures so I know that it's changed if it's the same. If it's scissors, then scissors, I don't know if it's changed. Or maybe I can program it to keep score. So people start to expand on what's already there and say, can I do this? Um, they also have a radio transmitter so they can talk to other micro bits. So like with that paper, scissors, rock game, they can know which one has won the game and track their score that way. Or you can use them to emit a frequency so that other micro bits that it might be hidden can be picked up on it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And we don't all need to be masters of it by any means. Like my knowledge is, is at a certain point with all of these tools, but in a classroom that's okay because you can start with the basics with the kids and they'll just go from there and they'll figure it out. And I think that's a big learning curve for some teachers as well, is that stepping back and giving the kids some space. Well, don't you just love it when the kids are teaching the teachers? Totally. Well, absolutely. I think that's the best. For some teachers that's hard, but I think more and more are getting there. Sweet. So I've got myself a micro bit, an inexpensive micro bit at that. How long is this going to be relevant uh, in education as a tool? Like, has it got much of a product life? Yeah, I think so. Because you can connect so many different things to it, it's really expandable and diverse. The cool thing that with the new version of Scratch, Scratch 3.0, is that you can use the micro bit to control it. It's one of the most popular platforms for teaching kids coding. It's all free, they can save their projects. Teachers can create and design something for students to then go and change or fix up and debug. For anyone who's been using Scratch with something like Makey Makey, we'll be excited to know that now you can use the micro bit. We get all of our tools through PB Tech. What? Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. We're partnered with PB Tech and we work really well with them. They support us with training and also our tools. And I believe they do pretty good deals for, for schools and education packs as well. Pat on the back. Yeah, Pat well done, PB Tech. <laughs> you being from Using Technology Better, how can we find you? We've got a website. We've also got a great blog where we send out updates, but we run workshops all over the country. So if teachers are interested in coming along to one of our training days, we'd love to have them there. We're also happy to organize events around schools that want to host us. Really fun workshop days with free lunch. 